Hello everyone! Mabuhay! For today's video, we will discover and explore the various artifacts and primary sources that were preserved by the selective museums in Manila. You will be able to witness the beauty of our culture as well as our history and different invaders of our country. Now, we're very excited to show you these artifacts. So what are we waiting for? Tara na! At ating tuklasin ang nakaraan kasama ang group 4 mula sa NNEC 1. Anthropology Museum, and I'm going to show you one of the artifacts that piqued my interest. So, the tayo dito. So, now we are going to see here a different types of Romblon. So, ang ano nga ba ang Romblon? So, kung nga ba mga dry pandan leaves, kung saan ginagamit siya para makabuo tayo ng mat. So, now we are going to see here. Now, we're not gonna touch it literally, at yung glass lang. And ang tawag sa mat na to ay igit. So, yung mat na to ay galing siya sa manapatan sa ranggani and gawa siya sa mga rumblo na nakikita nyo ngayon dito. So, woven siya ng mga manlilikha ng bayan, estelita, tumandaan, bantilan, and donated siya sa mga Filipino people through the NCAA in So, let's see. Let's look at it here. So, we are going to see you. Marami siyang kakaibang mga patterns. And, hindi siya yung common na mga mat na nakikita natin nagawa sa mga tenda. Okay? So, we are going to see them. Grabe yung tedious and thorough work na ginagawa ng ating mga manlilikha ng bayan, estelita, tumandaan, bantila. Hello everyone! So, now we're at Anthropology Museum. Okay. Sakin pa ko sa inyong idol bag. So, okay. Alongan or aloha, it's a coffin. It's from Hong Kong, it's real to the chance to be So, it is a coffin, guys, and it is very important for individuals since there are some mga ukit na zoomorphic designs. And, um, this is an example, niyan, guys. Is this one is the Carabao head. So, we're gonna touch it because it's really good. We're gonna touch it. So, your Carabao's head, guys, is an indicator for a high social rock. And so, mga nilalagay dyan is a high social rock and the capacity to butcher the same animal. So, tingnan niyo yung mga details ng butcher nila. Dog wizard. Native Filipinos created pottery since 3,000 years ago. They used the ceramic chairs to hold disease. Other pottery used to hold remains of disease were decorated with anthropomorphic design. These anthropomorphic earthware pots date back to 5 BCE. The Manung culture is widely acknowledged to be one of finest Philippine pre-colonial artwork ever produced and it considered as a masterpiece of Philippine ceramic. We are here at the Manila Clock Tower Museum to visit not only the clock tower itself, but also to take a look at some paintings that contributed to the Philippines' exceptional identity. Here, we can see Mark Bellio's recent painting entitled, The Vendor. It presents a girl vendor who is holding a plastic basket while watching other kids playing. The girl in this painting wants to play with other kids but unfortunately, she cannot. Because she needs to earn money for her family and for her education to sustain and finish it so that she can achieve her dreams. Tell us. 
Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone who is watching. We are here at the National Museum of Fine Arts, which is just located right in front of the Philippine National University. The National Museum of Fine Arts showcases one known as popular painting, Spolarium. The Spolarium is a big painting that required one Luna to work for eight months. The painting also depicts dying gladiators from the ground, which also symbolizes how the Filipinos or the Philippines went through on the Spanish colonization. Alam niyo ba kung anong painting ito? Ito ay tinatawag na The Battle of Makta na ginawa ni Elmer Berlongan. Hi guys! We are now inside the Fine Arts Museum and this is the painting called The Battle of Mactan. To present an accurate picture of the Battle of Mactan, the Elmer Berlongan spent months of major interview and studies with this painting, The Battle of Mactan. It is well established that the attack came at down that Magellan was struck down by a poison arrow on his right thigh that it happened at low tide forcing the Spaniards to march to the beach in heavy armor while the Galleons were anchored too far for their cannons to be of any use and that Magellan ordered a few of his men to burn down the village in the tragically mistaken belief that it will demoralize Lapu-Lapu and his men. All these elements are presented in Barlongo's trademark composition. That's all, thank you! We are here in the National Museum of um, Fine Arts. So, this painting is called The Parisian Life, also known as Interior Tomb Cafe or Inside the Cafe. It is an oil and canvas impressionist painting made by the Filipino painter and revolutionary activist Juan Luna in 1892. It is made during the artist's stay in Paris, and this impressionist painting features a Parisian woman, elegantly dressed, sitting alone on a sofa inside the cafe. There's a coffee on the table, and the woman stares plumply in space. Three gentlemen can be seen in the background sitting around another table. They appear to be Filipino based on their looks and could be portraits of Luna and his friends. Bayanihan by Vicente Silva Manansala. The word Bayanihan is a famous Filipino word linked with all cultural and traditions. It's usually illustrated as a bunch of men working together to transfer a house made of bamboo from one place to another. But what I like about this painting is how it focuses on the people. Furthermore, when I look at this painting, I don't just see men. I see Filipinos in the way that the colors used somehow resemble the Philippine flag, from the red, blue, and white pants shorts to the way the dark skin so, ang tawag sa kanya ay hindi ko alam. Pero aalamin natin ang tawag sa kanya. The assassination of Governor Matanga. Basahin na lang natin. Also a good friend of Pastor Mariano, Ben Nure. He achieved our history presentation in Europe, United States, and Philippines. This painting is the third son he has of interpretation a violent and historical event that took place in Manila during the Spanish colonial period. The Fernando de Samante, the Spanish appointed Governor General of the Philippines, has demanded that the Spanish friars be paid their loans they had borrowed from the government. In anger, the Spanish left a mob which assassinated him and his son in 17 years, reflecting the power of the Catholic
And now we will discuss Felix Resurrection Sidalgo's assassination of Governor Bustamante, also known as El Asasinado del Gobernador Bustamante, which garnered fame and respect throughout the nation's history. This painting measures about 338 cm by 413 cm on oil canvas and was finished by Hidalgo in Spain in 1884. The painting, as the title says, shows Governor General Fernando Bustamante being brutally murdered by the friars. He was rampaged by the friars or the Archbishop of Manila who were against his political ideals as a leader, including his attempt to end graft and corruption which resulted in his killing. Bustamante was bloodily executed by breaking one of his arms and shooting his head. The details of the painting, on the other hand, including the colors, texture, perspective, and depth, were also highly emphasized. The overall organization and elements used to constitute the physical appearance of the artist's works illustrates meaning and significance. Una Bulakenya, or A Woman from Vulcan, is a Spanish title of an 1895 painting by Filipino painter and hero Juan Novicio Luna. It is a serene portrait of a Filipino woman wearing a Maria Clara gown, a traditional Filipino dress that is composed of four pieces, namely the camisa, the saya or the long skirt, the panuelo, the neck cover, and the tapis, the knee length over skirt. Hello guys, nandito tayo ngayon sa National Museum of Fine Arts. So, itong nakikita natin ngayon, from here, from the Sibabila, it's painting po ni Juan Muna, ni Nobisho, titled the Parisian Character Studies. Juan uh, Muna, ni Nobisho's painting, Parisian Character Studies, is a captivating work that captures the vibrancy and diversity of Parisian society during the late 19th century. This piece showcases Luna's keen observation and attention to detail, portraying various individuals from different social classes, each with their unique characteristics and expressions. Through this painting, Luna provides a glimpse of into the cultural tapestry of Paris, highlighting the vers versatility as an artist beyond his iconic Historical Seen in the video is a painting a study of a family praying before a meal by Vicente Silva Manansala in 1960. It is a simple illustration of a typical Filipino family, doing a tradition that has been going on for years. It is a practice that we pray before our meals because this is a sign for every Filipino family that we are being thankful for our blessings. For example, is your supper. Wow! It was fun and memorable experience for us. We're sure that through our vlog, you've learned a lot in Philippine culture and history. As we explore these primary sources, we're also indeed amazed at how our ancestors create these artifacts that showcase the rich culture and tradition of Filipinos. This activity is an eye-opener for us students to discover the importance of those primary sources in the lives of Filipino back then. We do hope you gain new knowledge and enjoy this episode with us. See you in our next vlog!